Hi, everyone. This is Justin Olbrantz. And this is Don Schaefer. And you are listening to the Wise and the Wandering podcast for those who know the way and for those who are led astray. And if you feel like you fall into either of those categories, then you're in the right place. So let's dive in. So, Don, what are we going to talk about today? Well, I think we're going to talk about fear is faking you and the impact that it has on so many lives and so many people have no idea what's really happening to them. Yeah, and I think that's so right is fear is faking you. And what I mean when I came up with this concept, what I meant to say is that it's faking you out of fulfilling your destiny Mm. because it's all about what you believe, right? Yep. So fear is coming in, t- it's coming in between you and who you were meant to be, who you were called to be. That's right. It's faking you out of that. Oh, yeah. Yep. And it, and it leads us so much in life that uh, adverse, you know, fear is something that controls a person. And a lot of times your whole functions in life. I know I did a message a long time ago where it talked about too crippled to achieve. Like you talk about a purpose, and a lot of times what happens is fear cripples the individual to the point where you can't do the things you'd like to do. You can't function the way you should function, and it's developed because you're not born in this world with fear. The only fear a child has is a fear of a loud noise and of falling. You know, children, when they're born in this world, there's two areas that they'll go, (gasps) If it happens to them, you know, because right. because it's instilled inside of them. But beyond all that, we learn fear, yeah. you know, and it depends on, because we were talking earlier, because uh, my nephew, when I yep. had a meeting with a group of people, and he comes walking, he's about five years old, comes walking out of the other room with a little uh, um, a spider on the end of a, <laughs> a spider web, and all Oof. the women were screaming, and everybody's getting all scared because there was a spider, but he wasn't afraid. Nobody taught him to be fra- afraid. Yeah. And, and that's in life right now. We sometimes live a rough life because of the fears that we've developed inside of us. Yeah. And I think you have to believe in it too for it to take place in your life, for it to have control over you. Yeah. Because we talked previously about, you know, we've talked about having an adversary or an enemy, just like we have a God that yeah. loves us. We have somebody who's plotting out against us. Yes. And I think that fear, when we just understand fear, mm-hmm. right, and understand what it is, I think that it is a control mechanism yeah. for the enemy oh, yeah. to keep us from starting anything, That's to right. keep us from gaining wisdom in certain aspects of our life, mm-hmm. from learning a, a new instrument or... Yeah. Learn, you know, learning a new skill or doing something like that. Oh yeah, it's it's a control mechanism because it stops you from ever wanting to start anything. Because on the other end of that fear is you're going to fail. Yeah. You're going to there's going to be failure. Yep. So the fear of failure is what stops us from ever just starting something to begin with. That's true. That's true. Because I know a lot of times what we have, Justin, is we have dreams. You know, especially when we're young. I look at young children, they haven't developed fear yet. And they have all these dreams, these big ideas of what they're going to become and what they're going to do and all that stuff. It isn't until they get older and we get adults tell them, you know, oh, you better be careful. You better not be. Because I remember, yep. like, we were just this last year, if I can just interject this a little bit. I was down in Florida yep. and uh, I was with uh, grandparents and the grandson was there and he wanted to go on one of these um these tube rides where you get on a big long tube and there's a guy that drives it and yep, you know, hang, sure. on, hang on for your life. Well, the grandfather says, you got better be careful because you fall off uh, out, out there. He says, there could be sharks. There could be all this stuff. I'm sitting there, my goodness, what are you doing to this kid? Right. You know I mean? You're just instilling fear. Yeah, planting still, all these ideas in yeah. their head. But we allow this to happen to us. And a lot of times we speak fear into other people. We don't even realize we're doing it. Yes, I think we've been programmed to protect ourselves from failure by not even attempting. And that programming comes from people like adults in our lives. Our own parents oh, yeah. have programmed that into our, our mind to yes. just protect yes. ourselves, oh, yeah. to not even try. Yes. And yes. then it, it, it starts a, a cycle of it starts a cycle of wanting to be like a perfectionist. Yeah. And it and it and then it carries into like procrastination. Oh yeah. Because perfectionism, I think, really is procrastination. Yeah. It's just, you never really want to start doing anything right. because you don't think you're going to be perfect at yes. it. Yes. 
yeah, you, you're fearing that you're going to fail, but uh, you'll never get to where you want to go unless you do get past all that. But it's interesting when you see how fear is in place on people, because I look at the pandemic. I look at what the world went through. A lot of fear there. Oh, man, you know, the bondage, the, uh, you know, Holding up, everybody's afraid of everybody. You know, I, I mean, we drove from Florida. We we had a motorhome. We drove from Florida. The roads were empty. I was getting gas for ninety nine cents a gallon. I yeah. mean, the roads were empty. Couldn't believe it. Driving yeah. through big cities. I remember those pictures of like Times Square, and it was just completely empty. Yeah, and it was it's, just. It's kind of crazy to think about that, you know, because oh. where else could that have happened? You I know, know, I know. But you look at it, though, Justin, you look at how easy it is to place fear inside of a person. You know, that's all you have to do is start talking about something that could be harmful or whatever it might be. And all of a sudden, you've instilled a fear inside of an individual and how we weren't meant to be that way. Because the opposite of fear is faith. Oh, that's good. The opposite of fear is faith. So we get fearful. What are we saying? We have lost our faith, you yeah. know, and God is wanting to get us into a place where we trust Him. We have faith in Him. And like you were saying, all the things, all the purpose that God would want for us, fear can never be an element of that. If we're ever going to show the great glory of who God is and what He can do in our lives, we need to become fearless. But like you were saying also, there's an adversary that's continuing to want us to be fearful, and it's affecting us in so many ways. A lot of people that are battling with depressions and illnesses and phobias, all this stuff, even substance abuses, all this stuff, it's fears and things that they've developed in their life. They didn't start out that way, but through life, their surroundings, their environments have educated them in a negative way where they are fearful of everything. And that's a killer in a person's life, especially if you want to achieve something. Yeah, it is. Because I think most of us, we doubt ourselves. I think that we don't, I don't think we, we don't think that we can do anything, but we haven't even tried yet. Yes. You know? And so how do you know you can't do it when you haven't even tried yet? Oh, yeah. Right? And I think that that's, it's implanted in our minds in various different ways. There's so many things that feed fear into an individual. I mean, there's so many things that feed fear into somebody. I mean, like you were saying, the pandemic, you turned on the news, you saw, you know, like a death ticker in the corner of Mm -hmm. all the news stations. I mean, every, everywhere you went, it was like fear was being fed to you, like spoon fed to you. And I really like what you said about the opposite of fear being faith, uh, because that, that just rings volumes to me. And I think that's so true. And I think that, in my opinion, God, God himself, everything that he embodies, everything that he does for you, everything that he stands for in your life, he is love. Like, mm-hmm. he's love. Oh, yeah. It's synonymous with love, in yes. my opinion. And the Bible says that perfect love casts out fear. Mm-hmm. Perfect love. So if you think about it in the terms of the way I just explained it, yeah. His love, His presence, having Him in your life, it casts out the fear. fear. Yep. And and if I can add to that a little bit here, love is something too. Like you're talking about the perfect love. You look at, say, a mother and a child, and that child runs out in front of a car. That mother is going to go after that child. She's not going to be thinking about her health and whatever's going to happen because she has a perfect love for her child. Yeah. Nothing's going to stop her. And that's the way in life we are meant to develop that type of love where we're going after things and fulfilling things and getting involved in different areas of life, a perfect love. You know, and you can sense it in people. You know, I mean, you know yourself, Justin, you get around people, you can sense these are loving people. These are people that will go the extra mile. They will do anything. I know we talked about in the book of Acts, how they could tell who followed Jesus by the love for one another. And it, But it does cast out a fear because if I have a total love for my God, you know, and, and maybe a purpose that he has for me, if, am I going to allow anything to stop me? 
When I realized, I know I, I, I talked a message one time called Unstoppable. When we find our purpose in God, there's nothing that can stop us because all the forces, all the resources that God would have are going to be there for us and pushing us. There's only one element that's going to stop us. And what is that? It is the fear that fakes us out. We yeah. allow it into our life, and all of a sudden we shut ourselves down. Yeah, we, we, do. we cripple ourselves in what God is wanting us to do. Yeah, and I think that in this world of comparison, in this world of where everybody is comparing themselves to each other, I think people want to be perfect. I think that they're they're striving to be perfect, yeah. and not being perfect causes them to li- to live in a state of fear, oh, yeah. and causes them to respond and react in a state of fear. Yep. And I think it just goes to say that no one's perfect. No, they're not. When we're referring to the perfect love, that's God's love. You know, that's what casts out the fear. Yeah, yeah. He is love, in in my opinion. That's right. And I would just say that because he's not perfect, we have to understand... Well, sorry, because he is perfect, we need to understand that we are not perfect. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to have a perfect childhood. We're not going to have a perfect past. And we're not going to be perfect individuals. We're not going to be perfect as friends, as parents, yeah. or as partners. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not going to be perfect in that sense. Yes. Because wanting to achieve perfection is keeping you from starting anything like we were saying before, but it's keeping you from developing as well. Mm-hmm. You're not developing. You're yeah. not moving in the authority. Yeah. You're not moving in what you were called to do, what yes. you're being sent out to do. That's right. Because you're always focused on being perfect and we can't be perfect. Mm-hmm. And I think that fear is what kind of brings us into that state of mind that yeah. makes us think that we have to do something perfect. That's right. Right. In fear of being compared to others and not living up to certain standards in the world. That is true. That is true. And that's where the beauty of what we have, Justin, when we allow Jesus Christ to be part of our lives, yeah. is we have a divine nature. And God has changed us. He didn't give us a spirit of, of fear, it's of love and power and a sound mind. Yeah. But he's gotten us to the place where the things that people fear the most we can look at those in a practical light. Because I know the Bible talks about where is the sting of death? Where is the victory of a grave anymore? All this stuff, as far as our health, all this stuff, we want to take care of ourselves. We want to nurture ourselves. But all of a sudden, the sting is gone. Yeah. You know, I am not afraid of this stuff anymore because I know I'm in his hands. He's wanting the best. And if he's wanting to make me great in any way, it's all him doing it. And if, if I leave this world early, well, it's him doing that also. Yeah. You know, so what is there for me to be afraid of in life? What, you know, as far as venturing out, doing things, what people who succeed in life, they always say, I remember reading about a class where they took people through and they were saying that you need to fail about a hundred times before you can be con- consider yourself successful. <laughs> so they would send the students out and find way, things that they could do that they could fail at. So they could come back to the class, well, I've got about 10 things that I've failed at this week. Because, you know, this is the way we develop ourselves. And when you're talking about becoming perfect, yeah. it's a process of becoming perfect. You never start all perfect. And the people that are perfect, they consider themselves perfect, that we look at and say are perfect, a lot of times they are fearful because they're trying to protect themselves from anybody finding out how imperfect they are. Yeah, you know, so true. They're trying to hide themselves someplace and keeping themselves so nobody knows. They're not transparent. You know, and that's the beauty of God, too. You can be transparent. I am who I am. I, I have nothing to fear. I mean, I sure I have my weaknesses. God is working on me, but I am what I am, and I'm a work in progress. I am something that God is developing. And that's where to have the knowledge of the element that is killing our society today, which is fear. People don't realize it. All these people that, you know, even like, could, things that happen, you you got to have a counselor. you got to have some resources and this and stuff. You yeah. know, I mean, what they really need is somebody to share who Jesus Christ is and what he does in a person's life. They don't need all this 
counselors and this and that to try to remedy the situation. And then you look at people that just live horrendous lives and you realize that from young on, they might have been hurt in some way, fearful in some areas, never wanting to be hurt in that area again, but never becoming the person they could become. You know, all the abilities, all the talents, all the potential, everything in there, all tapped out because fear came over and visited them one day and knocked on their doors and they opened the door to allow fear in. And all of a sudden they are crippled. You know, they're controlled and they don't understand what it is. And that's where, like you were getting back to, God is the one, the source of all love. And he's the one that helps us to overcome our fears so that we can live comfortably in life. You know, see, and I want to mention too, uh, Justin, a little bit, that fear is an element that is necessary. God has allowed us to be afraid. I mean, when something comes at us and we need to be afraid and move aside or something, I mean, there's nothing. But we don't let that control us. And that's where we're allowing that element to control us sometimes. And, you know, it's a hard life. It is is a control mechanism, I think. And I think that you just said um, something about, in the Bible, it refers to for God not giving us the spirit of fear, yeah. you said, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That's right. And I think that you have to understand in that text that it's saying that the fear is a spirit, Yeah. that you're given a spirit of fear. Yeah. Okay, and it's not from God. No. So who's no. giving you the spirit of fear? I know, I know. And I think when, when you understand it in that context, you can see how this stuff starts to work. And it's mm-hmm. because you're being faked out from starting what you were supposed to be, the business that you were supposed yeah, to start, yeah. the song that you were supposed to write, right. the musician that you were supposed yeah. to learn, <clears throat> the art that you were supposed to make, right. the so much. The the contribution that you're supposed to be giving the world. That's right. You're being faked out of that yeah. simply by fear. Because yes, it it is all part of a process and fear is part of the process. And, you know, there is a, like you were saying, being perfect is a, is a process too. And there's progress that you get. Mm -hmm. And I think that failure is also a part of that process. It's a part of the learning process. And we have to, we can call it failure, but we're, we're we're just given multiple reasons to try until we succeed at something. And that's, that's really what it is. So when the spirit of fear According to the Bible, when the spirit of fear comes to you, it's not of God. That's right. The spirit of power and love and of a sound mind or self-control, that's coming from God. Yeah, yeah. The, the spirits that would reflect something that, something that loves you, right? Yeah. Not something that wants you to be scared. That's true. It wants you to, to not succeed. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, when we talk about spiritual warfare and stuff like that. I think there is certain elements of that that are trying to stop you from ever really getting out there oh, and yeah. achieving a purpose yeah. and helping people. Yeah, that is true. And I, and to add to that a little bit here, you know, um, God is wanting us to be at peace with ourselves and love ourselves and to love Yeah, he's people. wanting us to do all the opposite. Yeah, he's yeah. wanting us to do all this stuff. But a lot of times, you know, in life, that's where... We have to prepare ourselves. I'm going to just share a little bit because when we're talking about um, God get, allowing God to get into our life, He can set us free of all that. But people who are wise, people who are wise, they will take time to protect themselves. You know, when we get in possibly prayer in the morning and we get into gratitude and thanksgiving, this is the stuff sometimes that chases fear and anger out of our lives. It puts us at peace. A lot of people have a hard time leaving their house. They are fearful that someone's going to say something bad to them or some situation is going to happen and it's going to be not good or they're going to be embarrassed somehow or whatever. See, and that's all fear that comes upon a person. And I know like in the church world, they call it being prayed up, uh, prayed up a little bit, <laughs> where you take some time in the morning and you get yourself mentally prepared. See, I don't want... Fear is going to try to knock on my door today. And you know, you, 
You talk about the news. You talk about a lot of things. This sells fear. They sell fear. They, yeah. It's always the negative. It it's, sells well. What can happen to you? You know, in China, they got this going on. It might come here. You know, what am I going to do about all this stuff? Or, you know, look at the price of this. Or what's going to happen with our money situation? The dollar is going to disappear. All this stuff comes at us. See, I can be just embed this stuff and I can be miserable. You know, it can swipe the love. It can swipe the joy. It can swipe everything about me. And it can get me to the point where I don't even want to leave the house. Yeah. I want to stay locked up because it's not safe out there but you know if you can get fear out of your life if god can be a part of that and you can be just grateful for the life he's given you you have nothing to fear not even death you yeah i think no- if you can believe in god and what he has for you instead of believing in the fear yeah you'll be on a much better path That's i right. feel like people are just i mean especially younger people i mean they're just crippled with anxiety oh, yeah. like that's that's everywhere i mean everyone is anxious everyone is yeah, like you're saying, people don't even want to leave their house. There's a certain level of yeah. anxiety or something, and it's I think because it all starts at the the stem of letting in that oh, fear, yeah. oh, yeah. letting that fear creep in. Yes, and it, it it attaches itself and it manifests itself. I think the spirit itself it manifests itself mm-hmm. differently in your life because oh, yeah. it'll start taking things. Yeah. yeah, it'll start getting you to a point where you just feel rejected in a yeah. way. Oh, yeah. you feel it'll take you down memory lane it'll take you down flashbacks of certain times that happened in your life where mm-hmm. you felt completely excluded or rejected and it, i i think it really does it manifests itself in this way where it gets you to a point where you've been rejected by people or you feel like you've been rejected by people yeah. Yeah. and you also reject yourself yeah and then therefore since you're not really standing behind yourself, all this anxiety creeps in. And since you think that you're essentially rejected by everyone else, you don't want to go out and be around anybody else. So it just, it cripples people. And and I think it's, it's definitely fear is the cause of it. Oh yeah. Yeah. And uh, and it's interesting too. And I just want to add this a little bit. I could Um, see if you can get control of fear in your life, you can be very comfortable. We're in your own skin in who you are and what you do. And um, worry sometimes, a lot of times fear causes lots of anxiety and worries. And what I really like to see is when you see professional people handle it well. You know, you see people like maybe on a football team or something where they do something well and they point up up to the heavens. They know where their help comes from. Yeah. Because, you know, people sometimes in those positions, they have so much pressure you know, to perform, to be, and all this sort of thing. They need a resource. And a lot of them get into trouble. And it's mental pr- trouble. They get into drugs. They try to take care of squelching the anxieties and the fears behind. But the people who realize where the source of all all uh, comfort is and removing all the anxieties, they realize it's a relationship with Jesus Christ. And when they live that type of life, there is no real pressure. They just go out there and perform. If th- things don't go well, they just say, they blame it on God. I mean, I yeah. get myself a lot of times where if, if I'm failing at something, I say, you know what, Lord, I placed my faith in you. Where were you today? <laughs> you know, right. I didn't make it too well today. But, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to allow the fear of that to keep me off the field or to be able to sit there and allow the people around me to influence what I'm meant to be. Yeah. I'm going to live it. I'm going to live it. I'm going to get beyond it, you know, and that's where the Bible talks about overcomers, becoming an overcomer. We we have to overcome things in life, and fear is a big element that people have to overcome. And you can see, and you can look at your life, what are you afraid of? You know, I mean, a lot of people are certain things that they, it scares the socks off of them, you know, meeting individuals or whatever it might be. But then you say, why should I be fearful? You know, why is this? What is causing this? Like Justin is saying here, Mm -hmm. you know, is it where, is this something that God is sending my way? I don't think so. You know, he's wanting us to be comfortable. And that's where I know myself. Sometimes I get around people that uh, have, you know, they have a little bit of clout and stuff like that. But I realize that, you know, I've watched people put socks on for a long time. And it seems like people 
everybody puts their socks on the same way, <laughs> you know. And so they're just like you and I. Yeah, so, they are. You know, so you don't allow anxieties to be a part of all this stuff. You know, you talk to them just like whoever, but it sure does make your life a lot more comfortable. And what it does, it makes the people around you comfortable because you are comfortable in your own skin. I know yeah. who I am, and I can perform. I can do things, and I'm comfortable. And when I'm comfortable, people around me are comfortable. But when I'm fearful, when I got anxieties taking place, I'm not comfortable. And it tends to be that people around me are not comfortable either. It's just an uncomfortable situation. It is an uncomfortable situation for everyone. Oh, yeah. And I think that even ties back to what you were saying before in terms of the opposite of fear being faith. And it's having that faith that everything is going to work out. Yeah. Trusting you know, no matter God. what, you trust in God, oh, yeah. you put your hope in God, you put your trust in God, and you just leave it all up to Him. Oh, yeah. Like you're saying, Lord, you're going to basically get me out of this rut. That's right. You're going to work this out. Yes. You're going to work this out for us. Yes. And yeah. I think that as believers, I would want to talk about something when it comes to fear. Because I feel like in terms of fear, a lot of the times we come to the things of God, we come to the love of God, we come to Jesus, yeah, and we come for like the wrong reason. Yeah. And I think fear is one of the reasons. It, it's it's one of the like a it's almost like a driving force to try to turn believers to God. Okay, and what I mean by this is by saying because they're trying to bring you to the revelation of God for the fear of being cast to hell or being punished. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think that that's the right way that you should bring someone yeah. to the love of God. Yeah. You know, we talked about in the last episode in terms is is with questions about if this is such a loving God, yeah. you know, why is he doing all these bad things in the world? And I don't think he's doing the bad things in the world. Right. I think there's a lot of right. elements that are operating and he's trying to prevent so most yeah. of it. He's in control, yeah. but he's trying to prevent most yeah. of it. But I think that... A lot of the times I've seen people being brought to the Lord for that reason. I've, I've seen the church, the way it, it's kind of preached in the church is that we have to, we need to come to the Lord for the fear of being punished. Yeah. And I think what that does is when you do that, it creates an image of God that is not accurate. It's not correct mm-hmm. because you've came to him for the wrong reasons. Yeah. So the image you have of him is just, it's not accurate. Right. And what that does is all your life, you become kind of like a slave. This is true. Because you're in fear of messing up. Yeah, this is true. And, you know, if you look into the Bible, Paul said that the revelation of the goodness of God leads you into repentance. Yeah, yeah. So it's not the fear of being punished. It's the revelation of his goodness that will make you want to change yourself, yeah. that will make you want to repent, yeah. change your ways, stop true. doing things the wrong way. And I feel like the way Paul was saying, that's the way that we need to present God to people yeah. in, in the love that he is, in the perfect love that he is, in the true way that he is, yeah. not yeah. for just being fear of being punished all their life. So that every time they mess up, they go, they, the, the fear strikes them and they go into a state of panic and they go into a state of worry. Yeah. And all of the tactics, in my opinion, that the enemy, the adversary would use against you mm-hmm. is easily used against you because you fall into the same patterns. Yeah. And God yeah. doesn't want, I don't think God wants that of you. No, no. And that's where you're, you're onto something here. Because I know um, in, in, Proverbs, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. Yeah. You know, but it's, you have to look at this fear in a different light. A fear is a type of respect. Right. It's putting God in a position of respect. It's like um, when you're raising a family and you're the father in the household. Okay, you discipline your children. You love your kids. You do lots of things with them. Your relationship is great. But you discipline them. You develop a respect. The child loves you and respects 
respects you and wants to be a part of you and, and enjoys you and all this stuff, but they know your position in life. They know that you are the one that's going to make sure that they stay in line. And it's done in love. Yeah. It's done in love. And a lot of times people, you know, they look at God and they say, well, what a terrible God and all this stuff. And they're fearful. And like you talk about, as far as getting to heaven and stuff, he wants us to love him. He doesn't yeah. want us to fear him as the world world would want to have fear. He wants to have a position in our life, but he wants us to love him. So many times when you look at what people do for religion, you look at, they work their way to heaven out of fear. You yeah. know, they've, like you're saying, having a slave for a cause. You know, I got all these people working for me, building whatever, you know, and it's beautiful, 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 thinking that if they do this, I mean, God will spare them from yeah. whatever. They could be the right. t- most terrible people in the world, but they work, could they have a fear of uh, hell, but we shouldn't have that. Like you said, it's, it's a relationship. We come to him, yeah. we love him, we ask him to be a part of our life, and ask him to put the proper respect in our life for him. Yeah, because if the spirit of fear does not come from God, yeah. and that's kind of what it states in the Bible, then we cannot lead people to God by the spirit of fear. Yeah, We can't lead them by using fear no, no. to the goodness, to, right. his, to the revelation yeah. of God. You, to all that God wants to do in your life, you have to come to him for the right reasons. That's right. That's and right. I, I think that's been kind of misinterpreted, uh, I would say, over time. Yeah, this is good, Justin. This is good. I, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Because I know yeah. uh, what you're saying here. Because like, you look at Jesus Christ and his message. He wasn't walking around telling people they're going to hell. He was right. talking about the love of God. He was talking about a kingdom. He was talking about a life you could live free of fear. Yeah. And and that the, the religious world at that time were fearful of this because yeah. all of a sudden these people that they controlled because of fear, they didn't have fear anymore. Yeah. You know, Jesus put it all in a different perspective. And that's where a lot of times in life that's been tainted, you know, uh, the message and all that, it was a message of love. It was saying, hey, you know, cast all your ke- fears upon on me, and I will take give you comfort. I will take this all away from you. You have nothing to fear but fear itself. That's the only thing that's going to cripple. And that's where the, you get back in history. These men, they were fearless. Once they re- allowed God to work in their life, they were fearless. You know, they weren't afraid of situations and stuff. They were, they stepped out and they did things. And you look in the, in the history of mankind, the people and the things they have done. You know, I myself. What can I do? If there's a purpose in my life, fear can keep me from it. But if I can get in a relationship with him who casts out all fear, I can get beyond all that. I can allow him to work in me. I can do most anything. I remember a story, and I'm going to share if that's okay. I love uh, stories. Miss Higgins was her name, and she was from Australia. And uh, the story goes that she had, they call it a, a malady, or it was some type of disease. And she was 18 years old, and she had to have have one foot amputated, then the other foot, oh, wow. and then up to the knees, and then up to her trunk, both legs taken off, and then both arms were taken off, and she still trusted and loved the Lord and all this sort. And a missionary heard about her, and he was reluctant to come to her because she was obviously a victim, you know, and he didn't know how he's going to handle all this. But he says, I'll go there and I'll try to cheer her up. So he went and found where she was living. She He walked into her room, and he found 1,500 letters that were pasted on the walls in her room. And what she had done, she had lost both of her legs, both of her arms, but she was not afraid. She was trusting in God, and she realized that God wanted her doing something. There's a purpose. So she had a carpenter set up a device that would go on her shoulders where she could take a pen and she could write with her mouth. And wow. she wrote letters to people. And these 1,500 letters were all letters that came back of how she touched other people's wow. lives. Wow. And that missionary said that when he left, it yeah. was he that was lifted up. It wasn't her that he had to lift up. Yeah. You know, and that's where Jesus wants to do that in our lives. He wants to set us free of the things that would harm us. And that's where fear is an element that is faking us out, that is keeping us bound up and keeping us from the potential. You know, people, 
we myself i've got two feet and i got two hands i have a lot of ability to do things yeah. you know the only thing that's going to hold me back is fear if i let it and it comes knocking on the door often in yeah. different ways but it's up to us we have to get see life a lot of times is a pattern but if you can understand the pattern of what causes you to fear mm-hmm. what brings us in you change the pattern you come up with a brand new pattern yeah. i am not going to listen to this i'm going to get above all this i'm going to take time maybe in the morning of speaking positive things in my life i am yeah. strong i am able i am capable i am uh, brave, you know. Yeah. I am all this stuff. I am a child of a king that's going to ru- that rules this world. That's yeah. going to have a kingdom that I can be a part of forever. I am not going to let fear be an element that keeps me back. Yeah, that's so good because I think that Jesus wants, like you were saying, he he has a plan for you and he wants the best for you and he's he's going to do that for you. But he wants you to be sure about who you are. Yeah. He you wants know. you to know exactly who you are. That's right. Who you were called to be, but who you are, because he's the truth. Yes. Yes. And that's why, because you need to know who you are. And a lot of us, you know, we don't know who we are. And that's kind of the play on the podcast is yeah. there's people that are know the way and there's people who are led astray. And I think it's hard sometimes to know where... I think I've said this before, it's hard to know where you're going because you don't know where you are. Yeah. yeah. And I think I would go one step further to explain that is to say that if you don't know where you're going, just go back to what, you know, go back to where you started. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Go back to where you started and, and start from there because mm-hmm. fear is going to keep you paralyzed. Yes, it it's, it's just going to keep you stuck. Yeah, yeah, I mean, in some cases you may have started something, but in some cases fear might be stopping you from starting anything. But if you're already on a certain path, yeah, the state of fear can keep you just completely stuck and going oh, nowhere. It, it can, it can. And, and no, Justin, we sometimes feel like we're not worthy. Yeah. We're not worthy of the blessings of God and the things that God is wanting to do, you know, and we have a lot of different fears. We have fear of failure. We have fear of loss. We have fear of change. We yeah. have fear of intimacy, getting close to people, yeah. fear of being judged, fear of being too successful. What's going to happen? On <laughs> fear of loneliness, you know, or fear of rejection. Yeah. All these things here, you know, and a lot of times we fail to realize We are worthy. You know, God has created us and he's made us worthy of every blessing that he can possibly cast upon our life. And as soon as we realize that we are worthy of everything that God has for us and we reach out and we say, Lord, you know, I I know there's things in my life that are fears that are keep me in different areas, but I want you to take them one by one. Help me to understand these things and help me to put a foot down and not allow myself to be in a position where I can easily be taken down because God doesn't want us to be so fearful, as Justin was saying, that we are just crippled in different areas where we can't perform the way we want to do. And that's where in our society, in America, I think... We have to be really careful because there is so much out there. And we have an element that is missing. Uh, people really don't have a real knowledge of God. The Bible is something that, you know, if, if we have an opportunity now where the Bible is all over the place. I know myself, I used to have to go to concordances and, you know, I'd spend a half hour just digging up a couple scriptures. Yeah. And now I can talk to my friend Siri yeah. and, and give, I get the answers right there. You know, there is so many resources right now for us to get to know God, understand what God is wanting in our life. And that's where America right now, I, for the most part, they don't realize what's there. You know, they have been faked out of a, a lot of things in life. They don't realize that the source, the source is at our fingertips. Jesus talked about it. He talked about the kingdom is at hand. You know, mm-hmm. it's something that you can reach out and grab. We don't have to wait, you know, maybe next year. 
or maybe next week or next month. We Right now, we can take time to find and reach out to God and say, Hey, you know, Lord, I realize that I do have fears. I can recognize the stuff that's being talked about here in this podcast. I know that I got fears of whatever, different phobias in different areas, and I realize it's holding me back. I realize myself, sometimes I have a hard time sleeping. Sometimes I've got anxieties that are welling up inside me. My digestive system, or even my sicknesses, a lot of this stuff is all brought on by fears. You know, all this, I mean, we go to the doctors and they give you medications, they give you drugs, you know, to get you so that you calm down and whatever it might be. But if you could come to the source and realize that Jesus is the source of all comfort, all love, and he wants to take all and cast out all fear in our lives and let us be peaceful. Let us be peaceful in life. Yeah, because in the in the revelation of God and his love, I think the true revelation of his love is full acceptance, being yeah. fully accepted. Yeah. Because you talked about people feel they feel unworthy yeah. and they feel and I was saying before people you get to a point where you feel you let fear lead you to the point of being rejected yeah. and you just feel rejected by everyone. You feel rejected by yourself yeah. and that adoption process that, that being a child of God, that, that process is full acceptance. Yeah. It's being fully accepted, knowing you're fully accepted mm-hmm. and you're no longer rejected. That's right. And I think that you've said a lot about fear in general. Yeah. And I think you touched on a lot, you know, a lot of stuff and I think that sometimes we have to look at it more, not just spiritually, but kind of like more logically. Yeah. You know, what? why are we really being afraid of this? Yeah. What, what's yeah. the risk? That's right. You know, what is the risk here? Is there yeah. really a risk? What's What's the liability of, yeah. Yeah. of this situation? Oh, yeah, is, is there, is there you, you have to, to you kind of punt fear back on its face. Yeah. You know, like one this. thing that I'd learned... One thing that I learned in August, I think that was, August when I went skydiving and jumped out <laughs> of a plane, decided that I wanted to jump out of a plane at 10,000 feet in the air, I really flipped, I just turned fear on its face when I did that. Yeah. Because up until then, I had a crazy fear of heights. Yeah. So going 10,000 <laughs> feet, jumping out of a plane uh, was not an action, it wasn't, it wasn't an easy thing to do. Yeah. But when I kind of turned fear on its face and I made that decision, it made me realize there are situations that I definitely should be fearful of. Mm-hmm. And that, that was one of them because there's certain things that could go wrong. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of safety involved in that stuff. And yeah. that goes in, that's taken into consideration. But there are things that can happen. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely things that can go wrong. So, what I'm trying to say is there's things that you should fear and then there's things that you really, according to logic, when you just look at it in terms of risk and liability and there's really nothing to be feared. Mm-mm, mm-mm. And in the truest sense of the word, you know, I think that it is, we are being faked out constantly. Yeah. We're being faked out with fear yeah. and it's causing us to react and respond irrationally a lot of the time. Yeah, it's yeah. causing us to push people out of our lives that we actually need. Yeah. It's causing us to bring things into our life that we do not need. Right. The fear is manifesting itself in different ways, oh, yeah. c- keeping us away from treatments and cures. And like you're saying, the source that's actually going to get us past all that, this that fear, so that's right. going to bring us so far past that. Like you're saying, the perfect love, mm. that's going to cast it out. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's so true. And, and it's interesting too, Justin, when you, when you look at everything, when it's all said and done, you know, when our life is over and we're on the by and by or wherever it might be, yeah. we'll look back and we'll see how small that one element was in our life, how right. little this really was, but we made it big. We made yep. it big in our life and we made it a fearful thing that controlled us. It was absolutely nothing to yeah, begin with. It was with. A, a drop of water it in the ocean. It was nothing. You know, and it's interesting too, I just want to mention this. A lot of people use the word saved. Yeah. You know, I got saved. Last night I got saved. You know, I said, well, praise the Lord, you got saved. But saved from what? Right. You know, it talks about being saved from your sins or the wrongs yeah. in your life, right. but saved from your fear. He wants to save us from the element 
that is com- keeping us from being complete and whole in Him. And that's where the, the topic we're talking about tonight is beautiful, Justin, because fear is an element we need to be saved from because yeah. it's killing us. It's killing our society. It's causing all kinds of issues. I look at people on substance abuse and depressions, all of this stuff. A lot of it's just fear that they can't handle. That little element that someday they're going to look at and say, hey, you know, I mean, I fought this all my life. When the source, which you're talking about, Jesus Christ was there all the time. He said, I'm wanting to set you free. I'm wanting to set the captives free because fear is a captivity. It's something that's keeping us bound up inside. I can't be the person I really want to be because I'm too fearful for this. But Lord, help me. Help me to be free of all this. Help me to live life the way life was meant to be lived. Help me to be able to glorify you and become the person you designed me to become and not allow all these little elements around me to control my thoughts and my ways, my digestive system, my everything, you know? Yeah, you lose control completely. And I think that when you accept God into your life, you can really take back control. Yes, you you can can. take back power over fear. Like the scriptures state, so you can take, you get power, a spirit of power and love and sound mind. Ooh, yeah. You take back the power, That's good. you take back the love, you take back the control from the fear. Because yes. up until that point, the fear can control you in so many ways. And like I was saying before, it can, it can make you react irrationally a lot of the times. Yes, it can. And it, it can cause itself to manifest itself into your life where you you don't want to put yourself out there. You don't want to try anything new. Yes. You just want to, I think what fear does is it keeps you in a comfort zone yeah. and you want to stay, stay in your comfort zone. You want to stay with, not only does it, it deceive you initially, but that it keeps you in a fallen state. Yeah. It keeps yeah. you in a state of suffering and the very cause of being in that state is what prevents you from also getting out of that state because then you can't leave your comfort zone yeah. be- because you're in fear of being around something that's not familiar to you that's right that's right and not being comfortable yes. you're in fear of that oh, yeah. so then we live in this in this constant struggle of always having to stay complacent because we fear ever trying to get out of that comfort mm. bubble that's true that's true. And uh, it's interesting what you're saying there because you talk about a comfort zone. A lot of times what fear does, not only is it keep you in a comfort zone, but it keeps you in a family of fearful people. Yes. See, it seems like if, when one person gets it and steps out and is fearless, it seems like the people who are fearful will try to bring them right back into that fearful yes, state that's again. So true. You know, and that's where you need to get beyond all that. And sometimes you need to realize that your association sometimes is an issue. If you're hanging around fearful people that are constantly speaking fear into your life, you might want to think about getting around people and sources such as good podcasts where you can have encouragement put in. And it's interesting when you talk about a power and a sound mind, because we are basically an energy. We have electricity uh, moving inside of us. We take energy drinks to give us more energy. What fear does, it dampens the electrical sources inside you. Yeah. All the energy that God would want inside you to be able to do things, all of a sudden you're draining it. You've allowed an element called fear to come in and it's sucking many amps of electricity out. You're you're redlining because you just can't do anything. You don't have the energy to yeah. step out. But God is wanting to give you the power you know, and of a sound mind and of love to be able to do all of this sort of thing. He's wanting to energize you. Yeah. He is your charging source. I mean, you run your phone all day and you plug it in overnight to get charged up. We go to bed, you know, physically because we want to get charged up for the next day.
way, but our emotions, our ways of thinking, we wake up, and if we don't charge them up, if we don't take the time possibly to think about the things of God, to be grateful and thankful for our lives, all these things that are positive, we allow ourselves to walk out the door half empty. Or sometimes we're drained before we even get to work or school or wherever we're going. We just don't have the energy. And that's where fear is a drainer. It's a killer. It's yeah. destroying the potential that we have and the abilities we have to do things. Yes, because it just causes you to live into the state of feeling all of these emotions, like you were saying, that that drain so much energy out of you, like worrying, yeah. just taking yeah. all the energy that you would need to worry on yeah. something, all the energy you could be using to be productive in something, all yeah. the things that you're worrying about, you could you could be using that energy, right? Yeah. The doubt, the hatred, you know, just like these certain emotions that we feel that just kind of this resentment, like you were saying before in previous episodes, bitterness and stuff yeah. like that. Oh, yeah, it yeah. drains all of that energy that you need. It, you know? so, it, all, so it all stems from that source of fear. Yes. And it just, it, it takes what we need to get through our situations and overcome our pasts and overcome our traumas and overcome our addictions. It takes all that energy and robs it from us from the start. Yeah, what, yeah. We, what we would actually need to get out of that. That's right. To, to push past it. Yes. You know, yes. to become better than we were. Yeah. Because that takes a, a lot of energy. It does. It does. Even to do podcasts, you know, this yeah. stuff here, there's anxieties, there's You're stuff like that. But we, we have a faith in God to step on beyond all that. And that's what happens when you do things. You do it, like you're saying, going up, it took 10,000 feet, but it took 10,000 feet up in the air for Justin to get over his fear of heights, but he jumps out yeah. of a plane. But what happens is you develop a confidence in the abilities that you can do. So a lot of times the things you are afraid of, like Justin was talking about heights now, he did the element to saying, you know what, I am going to overcome this. Yeah. So whatever it is in your life that possibly is creating a, a fear, sometimes you need to attack that. And because yeah. I know myself, you know, when you remember when you're young, you look at you're fearful of some things, then all of a sudden you get older and you look back on when you were young, you says, what the heck? Why was you, I afraid of that? Yeah, you sit there and laugh at yourself because it was absolutely nothing. Yeah. And a lot of times what the things we're afraid of right now, the fear in our life, absolutely nothing. God could easily snap that out of us. We can develop a confidence, a faith in Him. You know, faith that he's going to help us in these areas. And we'll, and the more we walk in faith, the more we become fearless. Yes. You know, the fear has no control over us anymore. And then we are comfortable. I am who I am. I don't yeah. have to worry about where I go, how I am, or whatever. Because what you're looking at is what you're getting. It's what yeah. God has created. And I'm not going to let fear control me and keep me. Yeah, from, and I don't have to walk in fear anymore. I can walk in victory. That's right. Yes, yeah. we're more than conquerors. Yeah, so we're more than conquerors in him. And we also just have to understand that fear is faking us out. And when I say fake, I mean it's not the truth. It's not authentic. It's something that you would actually have to come into agreement with it for it to work its way in your life. So we have to come in disagreement with it and understand that it's fake. And in the Bible, it says in, in Psalms, it says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all of my fears. So the Lord wants us to be free of the fears in our life. Well, I think that wraps it up for today. This was a good one, Justin. I think so too. Hey, we're glad you guys found your way here today. And we hope you can join us again next week for another good word. Until then, stay blessed by the best. See you guys.